on okay hang on a second all right so <clears throat> i'm waiting waiting for the population to come through fantastic people are on today i want to make it a bit lighter i noticed that yesterday was very very tough how are you guys doing hello jigger today I, i'll be meeting with a gentleman from the financial times and um, also i'll be having a meeting with a professor from harvard who is interested in my views on religion interested in my views on religion so that goes a long way um so that's what i'll be doing today um yesterday was intense and needed yes i know but today i want to tone it down a bit and i also want to rant a bit because i'm unhappy unhappy about a few things that i believe i should draw attention to i feel insulted i feel let me just use the word insulted or oh, i felt insulted yesterday when a young lady called me up and told me that she wanted me to be her manager i was like with everything i'm doing you want me to manage your career wow okay and today i got an email from a guy and after that email i was 10 times more insulted <coughs> The guy asked me to help him get into Big Brother Nigeria. That he needed me to help him get into Big Brother Nigeria. And I'm like, I'm here trying to help people get into heaven. And your problem is Big Brother Nigeria. I should help you get into Big Brother. Like, I don't just have walk again. So I was like, okay, because maybe these people don't know. Maybe if I start charging a fee, you know, then somebody called me this morning. I put my phone number out there for people to be able to reach me with issues with regards to counseling on the Bible. You have any issues with the Bible? My phone line is open. As hard as my schedule is or as tight as my schedule is, I do find time to sit down and actually talk to people. This guy calls me up and says he needs a favor. He needs me to help him. All right, what? He needs me to help him promote his music. That's when I realized that, look, if I don't, if I don't, put, if I don't put a nail in this coffin, it's going to go on forever. The funeral service is going to last forever. Here it is, finally. I'm not talking about artists. The only brand I'm here to tell anybody about is brand Jesus. Free nation in Christ. Simple. My job as a radio presenter includes talking about celebrities and politics and blah, 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 blah. It ends there. You want me to promote your music? I'm, I'm going to sit down with you and I'm going to... I'm looking for the right word. I'm going to consult for you. And I'm going to charge you a fee. If you want somebody to sort your music out for you free of charge, go and meet IK. IK said he's doing it for free. Me, I'm not. I'm not in the business of helping anybody grow any music career. I have made superstars and got nothing out of it. As a matter of fact, one superstar that used to ride Okada to come and see me, to help, to beg me to promote his music for him, mocked me over my true views of tithing at Omotola's birthday. And that was the day I said, enough is enough. You want to be a musician? I'm not going to talk to you until you pay my consultation fee. I'm not even going to listen to you. I'm not obliged to play your music on the radio. I'm obliged to give my listeners a good time. 
And if that good time is not going to include your music, you can go and die. I'm upset now. Because I have made big brands in this country. Because I have made big brands in this country. And not one has stood up against the tyranny we have. Who remembers that timid clown? When they first brought him to me, he was a, <clears throat> a, a, a rat out of the creeks. Today he has the mind to write me public letter. So please, I don't want if you I, I don't want to curse people out because I believe that after this disclaimer, anybody that calls me eh, that he freeze, I want to enter Big Brother. And eh, that he freeze, I want you to help me with my music career. And eh, that he freeze. If because you see that 10 seconds I used to pick up your call. I'm watching an Adeboe video on YouTube. Or I'm watching a Miles Monroe video on YouTube. I'm listening to what they're saying. And I have to pause it to pick your video, your call. And then you tell me about that, I will go off on you. You see, yesterday I was upset, and I'm going to continue with this. I will go off on you. I'm reading the Bible. You call me up. I will take your call. But I want you to realize that I'm taking calls on this. If it's a matter of life and death, it's different. Yesterday, somebody called me again that they said they have a cancer patient. Um, uh, some radio show. I'm like, you guys are a radio show. You have a platform. And you guys need, they said they needed 40,000 Naira. You guys have a platform. Why do you, I'm helping those who don't have platforms, not those who have platforms, are going to use the free nation and then give, go back to their own platforms. That's not what we're doing. We, we, there are people amongst us who have not eaten. I can't leave my church and go and feed other people's children. When my own, not children, my own brothers, because I don't have any children in Christ, my own brothers... Because we're all brethren, haven't eaten. So I want you to understand we're here for the helpless, not for those who can be held, but want to just knowing that we will just do magic for them, they want to come to us. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. I saw the whole payola, uh, what is it called, that IK was raising. Uh, pay for play, stop pay for play. That's high key. If you want to discuss your music with me, you're going to pay my consultation fee before I even sit down with you and listen to you. Anybody that does not like it, that's their business. Maybe if you started paying, you will not stand up to me in a mortal last party and make mockery of me after I made you, I made you who you are today. I'm in the business of making superstars and I can make superstars because it has been proven that I have made superstars, but I will not make superstars that will come and mock me. Somebody said I'm angry, I'm angry, and I need you to be angry. There's a certain level of anger we need to be before we can take our mandate back. We are not going to take it if we are lackadaisical or if we are chilly. I'm not sitting down to have any discussion with any politician that is not ready to fight the religious menace in this country. Any politician that, don't, no, no matter how good you are, if you're going to come back and submit to the godfatherism of what the church has become, you are an enemy of the country's progress because you are going to fuel the merchants of the illusion of hope. And as long as the illusion of hope is being sold, we cannot offer real hope. So I'm just, I'm, I, just, I just want you to understand so you don't get it twisted that if he's not a nice guy, I'm not a nice guy if you come and meet me with your uh, booty shaking music that you want me to help you promote. I'm not going to be nice. Don't call me about it. You want us to talk about it? Consult. Let's, let's, let's start doing things properly. So that is 
I'm sorry if I'm angry, but it's been going on for too long. I'm sitting down here watching a pastor's video, trying to understand where he's going with his backsliding doctrine. I, I, and then you call me to tell me that you want to be in Big Brother. I worked in the entertainment industry for 22 years. I'm not going to sit down with anybody and promote their career for them for free. If IK wants to do it, that's his business. And by the way, if you need help with Big Brother, you can call him for that too. I don't know anybody in Big Brother and I don't intend to know. One or two of the people who went into the house and came out are my friends. I'm cool enough with that. I'm not interested in what it takes to get in or what it takes to win. I'm interested only in what it takes to make heaven. That is what I, I if you call me, I am driving the other day. Last time I said somebody called me that if he's explained this Bible verse to me, I left everything I was doing, risk almost got caught by last one. Because that's my business. That's and I'll do it for free without charging you a thing. I will preach that word of God for you anywhere you stop me. It's my duty to preach to you. It's my duty to enlighten you. It's my duty to teach you. It's my duty to discuss with you. It's my duty to argue with you the way Paul argued the scriptures. I dare not charge you for it. I dare not charge you 10% of your salary. I dare not make you raise an altar or satanic offering or whatever it is they raise. I dare not do any of those things. But don't sneak into my platform because my number, my number is out there for those who want to hear about Jesus. It's not for musicians that are upcoming. I want to blow. If you want to blow, call my colleagues. <clears throat> the Free Nation platform is not for politicians who want to come and continue being side chicks of their geos. I didn't set up this platform, risking my career, my life, and everything to help somebody get into power to continue. The same people we are fighting against to continue in their oppression and tyranny. So if you don't have anything to talk about with regards to God, the Bible, Jesus, Christianity... Don't bother calling me. There's a certain young boy who was part of my group. I just noticed that this boy just wanted to be a radio presenter. Everything about it is radio present. Baba, I'm a radio presenter. That's my job. Radio presenting is not my purpose. It's my job. It's what puts food on my table. It's not my purpose. My purpose is uniting Christians with Christ. That's my purpose. That's what I live for. That's what I breathe for. It's like saying because I take a picture of my watch or bracelet, I, uh, my purpose is buying watches. Or, no, 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 no. My purpose is relating or is reuniting Christians that have been dragged under the law. Reuniting them back with Christ. And oh my goodness, it is such a difficult job for you to distract me and drag me into the public domain because you just had a song about booty shaking that you want me to promote for you. Somebody say, don't let money. Money can never change me. I will never charge you for the word of God. 250 one-hour videos are available on my YouTube page. I've never charged anyone one naira for any you are here. If I have, call me out now. That I said I would, I would not preach until you gave me money. Or after I preached, I asked you to give me money. It never happened. It will never happen. But don't sneak under that, that carpet and expect you to, me to help you grow a radio career. I didn't come to unite you with the radio. I'm looking for radio. There are radio stations full everywhere in this Lagos. Go and find one and walk. Is what I did. 
go and pay your dues. I remember my boss in the industry. They sent me to go and buy cigars. I used to run and go and buy it and come. So go and pay your dues in the industry. Don't come and sneak under Free Nation uh, because Daddy Freeze is there. Daddy, we are, we are supporting. Support me because you believe that religious tyranny must be eradicated. Support me because you believe Nigeria has, uh, has moved away from Christianity and Christ. Support me because you believe that we can make Nigeria better. Support me for those things. But don't support me because you believe I can help you get on the radio. You have missed it. Any member that has not been with Free Nation for a minimum of two years will not get any radio appointment, any appointment whatsoever. I've done it in the past. I'm not doing it again from today. Any Free Nation member that wants his music promoted must be an active member for the at least two years. Then I can promote your music for free. You must share our ideology and you must be ready to stand up for Christ. One guy was begging taste buds for t-shirt the other day. Taste buds was about to send the guy t shirt He just went to his page. There's no free nation. There's no free disciple. There's nothing we believe in. Celebrating this radio presenter, celebrating this. You just want to get our t-shirt. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. If you're comfortable being a radio presenter in the poverty capital of the world, I'm not. If you're comfortable being a musician in the poverty capital of the world, I'm not. <clears throat> if you're comfortable with your oppression and tyranny in the poverty capital of the world, I am not. If you're comfortable with a geo flying private jet while the members that fund that private jet lifestyle are riding on cadres and living in swamps, I am not. And I have every right to be angry. So don't you ever dare call me up today or any other time and ask me about music. Christ, somebody said Christ did not give conditions. Listen, Christ did not work on the radio. I'm working on the radio. And if you face what I face, Christ quit carpentry and his ministry was supported 100% by people. Luke chapter 8, go and read it. I don't want to share that entire burden with you all. I should actually quit my work and fit and do this full time. <coughs> it's what Christ did. But I want to follow the leadership of Paul, who made sure he always had what he was doing. So if I'm giving you a condition, I will stand on my condition. Before Christ blessed Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus restituted. Zacchaeus said, I will give half of what I own to the poor. And if I've robbed anybody, I will. He restituted. Then Christ blessed him. There is a condition. You must be with Christ. Someone said, how do I become a member of the free nation in Christ? Simply by taking time out to study the word of God like Jigger does. Somebody is saying, so these Jigos, Jigos are doing, they are doing the opposite of what Christ did. Christ cannot do a hundred things and you take one of them and do those one and do that one. Christ did not collect tithe, did not collect offering, not sow seeds. His ministry was funded. The funding did not even include a horse or a donkey. He only borrowed the donkey once. He walked with his leg everywhere he was going. But his food, his shelter, everything else was sorted. They are not sorted on food or shelter. They live in mansions and fly jets and drive Rolls Royces. That cowboy life is not what Christ died for.
somebody said they want me to explain a reading taken from John. I can't find it. Where did you put it? And I just saw first John. Okay. Third John chapter 1 verse 2. Let's open it up. Dear friend, I hope it is well with you and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. What was there? Julian, I don't understand what you need clarification there for. It's a simple letter. Do you need any? I don't know why. Any. Baba, please, if you if you can't really send me what you need me to teach you about, let let, let me move on with my message. You said you want me to teach you to explain Third uh, John chapter one verse two. He said, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may prosper, even as your soul prospers. Let me read it to you in Greek. Now I know where their arm robbery is coming from. Okay, you have put it out there. Let me read it to you in Greek. Let me read it to you in Greek. Sorry, I'm waiting for the Greek Bible to load. This Greek Bible sometimes can be heavy. Okay, it's there. It says, Agape peri panton, you chumai see, you donestai care, higginison, kathos, you donatai, so he seek. Beloved, concerning all things, I pray you to prosper and be in good health, just as prospers your soul. I love this particular Bible verse. I pray that you prosper and be in good health. Now, I'm going to explain it to you. We're going to read it in context. We're not just going to pick verse 2. I'm going to read from verse 1 all the way down. If you read from verse 1, this letter is from John the Elder. I am writing to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. Are you Gaius? Don't draw, you see, he prayed for his friend. He did not pray for Christianity. He, okay, somebody said I'm not calm yet. All right, let's pray. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. I'm still, I'm still stressed. I got really pissed off this afternoon, you know, by people calling me to come and promote music, you know, and uh, that if please, please help me because they see the charitable works we are doing. They now want me to now help them promote their shaking bomb bomb shaking bomb bomb music. Not that I find anything wrong with the music, but that's not my duty. I'm here to promote only Jesus. So let's pray. Maybe I should get a glass of water. You know what? Let's pray. King, somebody said I should not harass. I'm not going to talk again until you explain what you mean by me harassing you. What do you mean by me harassing you? Because it's like today I'm going to, I'm going to boil. So King knew. Tell me. Tell me what you what you are saying, King, so I will not get angry with you. Please, 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 please. Where is this person? Where is he? Where is he? Let me just because I'm not gonna talk again.
Okay, should I just block him? Where is King? Fantastic. Let me just block him. All right, blocked. So can I continue? Can I pray and calm down? Somebody needs me to explain 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. If I remember, is I delight in insults and things like that. Uh, let me read it from the let me look for it and read it from the Greek Bible. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10. Let me read that to you. I know it's about. Uh -huh. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insult, in hardship, and in persecutions, in difficulties, for when I am weak then I am strong. Uh, let me take it from the Greek rendition. Dio eduko en estenai en hebrison en anarchises en dignomuske stenocheras hyper christo horton. Therefore, I take pleasure in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecution and difficulties for Christ. Um, it's exactly everything I've been preaching. I take, you see, when you come to Christ, there will be insult, there will be weakness, there will be hardship, there will be persecution. It's the advice I gave Yomika Sali yesterday. I said, look, I'm proud of you, you're doing a good job. But remember, do not bow, do not change, do not twist your words simply because of the hardship and persecution, because we were promised these things. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. So it's a very clear Bible verse. I take pleasure in insult, in weakness, in hardship, in persecution for Christ when for I might be weak, then strong I am. I don't know if I'm making sense with that. So it's, it's exactly everything I've been preaching. Now, someone said prosperity preachers use 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. And um, let me get a glass of water and then pray. I'm really upset. You guys don't have a clue. All right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Sorry. It's it's. I feel so angry when our work is taken advantage of by by people who are not who can't be bothered about anything but money. How they're gonna sell their songs and make money. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you to thank you for today. I beg you for the spirit of patience, I beg you for wisdom, I beg you for understanding as we discuss your word, and I beg you for the strength required to forge till the end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, um, should I start my message or I should just explain this third John chapter 1 that this lady had a question or this gentleman had a question um, on? What do you guys want me to do? Okay. Uh, Third John chapter 1. If you read it in the Greek, it says, Ho presbyteros geo. The elder to Gaius. This was a letter from the elder John to Gaius. Um, Third John chapter 1 verse 1. This letter is from John the elder. I'm writing to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. Uh, dear friend, I hope all is well with you and you are as healthy in the body as you are in the spirit. Some of the traveling teachers recently returned and may be very happy by telling me about your faithfulness and that you are living according to the truth. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. No prosperity preacher can ever use this verse to preach prosperity. You know why? Because they are not following the truth. They only pick a line that favors them 
and quote it out of context and quote it out of context and use it to appeal to your greed. You are living according to the truth. What is living according to the truth? You have neglected the law. You've relegated the law and you're not backsliding into it. You're steadfast in the truth that Christ resurrected and he alone is enough for the redemption of your sins. I think that is all the explanation needed. There was, a, there was you see, John blessed Gaius because Gaius was living in the truth. If you think I'm just tap into this anointing, you see, uh, yes, the entire Bible was inspired by God. You just can't tap into something. There's a, there's a context in which that thing occurred. The Bible says, I hope all is well with you. Let's, let, let's look, look, use another version. Let's use King James, for instance. Hold on, I'm waiting for the King James Bible to load. It says, Beloved, I wish you above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. If the truth is not in you, you cannot prosper. Thank you. Thank you. If the truth is not in you, you cannot prosper. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospereth. It's a criminal offense to quote this scripture out of context. Excuse me, guys. He said they teach you the prosper bit. Prosper is one line. I want to teach you the three lines that comprise this teaching. The elder John unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Are you in the truth? You cannot use this to prosper. That's why Nigeria is in poverty. Camera is looking too upwards. I don't see that though. Somebody say, how about those who prosper? They are not prospering in Christianity. They are prospering because they are making money. Nobody is prospering in Christianity. Nobody. Top 10 richest in the world are not Christians. Top 10 richest countries in the world are not Christian countries. So please, 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 don't even start that rubbish. Don't get me angry again. I'm coming down. Who is prospering in Christianity? Is Dangote the richest man in Africa Christian? Is Adenuga a, a, a Pentecostal Christian that is paying tight and following all these their Momo regulations? Please, 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 don't even bring that rubbish near me. You are prospering where? Are you prospering like Jeff Bezos? Are you prospering like China? Are you prospering like the owner of Alibaba? Those are people that we know. Are you prospering like Dubai? If you don't have what to say, keep it. <clears throat> there are three lines in this particular... I'm glad you even drew my attention to it. So I've always wanted to teach, but there's so much I want to teach in the Bible. So thank God you even brought this up. Okay, I should reduce the camera on, okay, maybe everywhere else the camera is a bit high. Man, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, is it better now, everyone? Is it better now? Uh -huh. Okay. So this letter is not for your Jews. Your Jews are not worshipping Christ in truth or in the spirit. They are worshipping Christ in, according to the law and their, and their understanding of the law. So the Bible says this letter is from John writing to Gaius, hoping he is well and he prospers. Not hoping for the church, he was hoping for Gaius. And there was something Gaius did before John wrote him this letter. If you are not doing it, you'll be a moron to think that this letter will apply to you. All right. Over, overall to today's message somebody says something the prosperity in john is talking about prosperity in good health and not money 
well that's another angle to look at it but whatever prosperity is talking about it is a prerequisite or it is a there's a prerequisite for that prosperity and that pros prerequisite is worshiping god in the truth okay now let me move on to today's message i'm going to try to be calm Today's message is titled Strawberry, Vanilla, and Chocolate Ice Cream. And I'm going to teach this message from experience. I grew up in Ibadan, a very ancient, boring town. If you've ever been to Ibadan before, you'd understand exactly what I am saying. Ibadan can be pretty boring, pretty, pretty old school, pretty local. So growing up... I only knew three flavors of ice cream, vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. At that time, the only place I used to travel to was Romania. And because I was in mine, I was quite young. It was my mom that did all the shopping. And because my mom probably Instagram again, I'm YouTube again. YouTube is back. Everybody's back. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. So, Nepa deal. But funny enough, on um, Instagram, the Instagram feed, because on a smaller modem, it didn't shut up. Uh, neither did Facebook. So, let me continue. So, um, I'm in a bit of a better mood now. So, um, like I said earlier on, I was growing up. Uh, I knew only three flavors of ice cream. Vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. Who went through that? Vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. Then, the only place we used to travel to was Romania. And because my mom um, believed that we... Even in Romania, in fairness to Romania, they were also going through a crisis that period. So they also basically probably had vanilla and chocolate. I'm not even sure they had strawberry ice cream. Romania was in a mess just out of... Um, when I first started going back to Romania as a child, I think the first time I went was 1984, under the Ceausescu um, regime. Every family was rationed 30 liters of fuel a month. That's how hard Romania was. It was a mess. Then after that, it started growing and evolving, but was still much of a mess because of the communist regime that was in power for a very long time. So all my life, I, we used to pass through the UK, um, but because we're young, we always stayed at home, and it was mommy that bought us ice cream, so it was always vanilla chocolate or strawberry. Then... As a radio presenter, I was reading a magazine. I was preparing for my show in BCOS uh, around 99, 2000. And I was supposed to talk about Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, and I think it was NSYNC. Um, NSYNC was uh, the band Justin Timberlake came from. So, you know, I was reading everything. I was trying to, you know, put my notes together. Uh, for what I was going to say on the radio and um, I was looking for interesting stuff about them um, at that time I think uh, NSYNC had a private jet or it was a small plane that they used to fly around with and the magazine now started talking about their favorite ice cream flavors and I was expecting them to say chocolate vanilla and strawberry and I started seeing flavors like pistachio what's pistachio I started seeing my favorite ice cream is Malaga. I felt very foolish. I felt very embarrassed. What's pistachio? What's Malaga? And I realized that the wealth of my knowledge was based on the wealth of my exposure. I want to say that again with emphasis. The wealth of your knowledge is based on the wealth of your exposure. What are you exposed to 
Somebody said macadamia. Oh, their flavor. Strawberry cheesecake. Um, brownie cheesecake. There are so many flavors. But growing up in Ibadan, ice cream had three flavors. And I experienced this same feeling when I was introduced to Christianity. And Christianity in Nigeria has three flavors. The chocolate being the prosperity doctrine. You are going to prosper in the name of Jesus. God's got your finances. God's got... One. The second flavor is the vanilla. Your enemies are going to die by fire. And the third is the strawberry. Your dumbass is going to pay for the, the, the other two. So the first part of Christian, the first flavor was the prosperity you're going to make out of being a Christian. The second flavor was that your enemies were going to die because you're a Christian. And the third flavor is none of the above is going to happen if you don't pay for it because you're a Christian. And I lived in the ignorance of the wealth of my reality, drowned by the consequence of my lack of exposure in three flavors only. Now, here's the problem. Strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla ice cream is not going to kill you. And strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla ice cream is not going to send you to hell. But prosperity in Christianity, killing your enemies in Christianity, and paying for it, according to Christianity, is going to send you to the worst part of hell, the, most, the hottest part of hell. Because that is nothing to do with Jesus. So I needed to go out. I remember as a grown man, one of my first trips to the UK. If you watch my interview with Eunice yesterday, I talked about it. Um, I traveled with Baskemouth. That time Baskemouth was, was a great friend. He still is a great friend. We just had our differences at a point. And he, he strung me along out of the good. He's done it so many times. That's why there's nothing he can do that will make me angry. He strung me along. I wasn't part of that event. He was the one. He was the star of the event. Uh, so he strung me along. I stayed in his room. I squatted with him. You know. And then, halfway through the event, he was so sought after then, they called him in Nigeria. We're supposed to do two events. One in Manchester and one in London. And um, on our way to Manchester, they called Baskem out and offered him more money to come back to Nigeria. So, since Baskem out is no longer a part of the Manchester event, I didn't have any business going there. I don't know if I'm making sense. Because I, I came with him, I was cutting with him. And he all of a sudden has to go back to Nigeria. So, I was stuck... One morning, our hotel ran out, and Eunice showed up, and she paid our hotel bills. I'm just giving you some small gist of our hustle those days in, in the UK. Now, living in the UK for a few days afforded me the opportunity to taste other flavors of ice cream. I didn't know ice cream could have nuts in them because the ice cream we have in Ibadan doesn't have nuts. I remember there was a Life Fort ice cream, some ice cream factory that started in Ibadan. I had the best ice cream. It was most ex the most expensive ice cream. It used to have toppings, but it was still chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. So, I started tasting cherry ice cream, raspberry ice cream. I now realize that there's a difference between gelato, sobre, and ice cream. I didn't know all these things before. And that's exactly what happened to me when I started studying the scriptures. 
I started seeing the flavors of Christianity. I started basking in the glory and the sweetness. If you've had strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate ice cream all your life, the day you taste cherry ice cream, there's one cherry ice cream with the cherry fruits in it, black cherry ice cream. They have it in Romania. It's, it's, it's going to run you mad. First time I tasted strawberry, I said strawberry. Um, what's that very popular one? Blue bunny. Lemon. That's when I realized. Hagen does. And you see, you won't sit in your house in Ibadan. And the world is going to come and present to you all the flavors of ice cream. There were some you're going to, there are some you're going to stumble upon when you're walking through the airport in Amsterdam, bored waiting six hours for a flight. There's some you're going to stumble upon driving through the countryside in Romania. There's some you're going to stumble upon because you've lived for five weeks in Glasgow. And that's exactly how the Bible works. As long as your understanding of the Bible remains your prosperity, the death of your enemies and those who are against you prospering, and the fact that you have to pay for both, you continue to dwell in one spot. But the moment you begin to travel in the scriptures, you travel with Philip to meet the Ethiopian eunuch. You travel with Paul to Jerusalem as he goes to face his persecution. You are there, a little cockroach on the wall, watching the stoning of Stephen. You are there, a little fly, buzzing about, attracted by the blood of Jesus, as they condemn him to death and crucify him. You begin to smell, taste, and see, as well as feel, other flavors. And the truth of Christianity begins to minister to you. And then you realize that basing your understanding of ice cream on three flavors is a disaster waiting to happen. Just like basing your understanding on Christian, of Christianity on the fact that you've got to pay for your blessings, you've got to pray for your blessings, and you've got to wait for your blessings and kill those who don't want you to be blessed. And the more you travel, the more you begin to see things. How would you feel if I told you that is not God's business if you do well financially. How would you feel if I told you that God doesn't care if you have any money in your pocket? If he did, John the Baptist would not be poor. But you see, because you've been eating three flavors of ice cream, you based your world on that, pushing your reality to the background. And then you start to worry. The geo of the ministry that preaches for enemies to die by fire did not preach for Shore to die by or did not pray for Shore to die by fire, it took him to court. So obviously God is not answering anybody's die by fire. Then you look at the second flavor. You're gonna be blessed in Christ, and no one is blessed in Christ. No one is blessed in Christ with money. Christ did not promise anybody money. Anybody money. I don't know how to reconcile this with you. 
But I'm still asking God to show me that if you open a business, do you really need to pray about it? I don't know how to understand. There are some, I'm, as you're looking at me, I'm still asking God many questions. That God, if I open a business that I hope to generate money, I know everything I've done, I've prayed about. But is it even necessary that I pray about my business? God, are you really going to answer me if I pray about my business? And I will not lie to you. For a very long time, I went to Mary Hill Primary School. And in Mary Hill Primary School, we're taught the sign of the cross. And we pray. There's nothing wrong with the Hail Mary prayer. There's nothing wrong with the Our Father prayer. The Lord's prayer with Jesus himself handed over to us. But what about the sign of the cross? I did the sign of the cross. I'm not even sure if I did it last night because it's become a part and parcel of me. But did Jesus really say we should do the sign of the cross? The three flavors of ice cream have been etched in my head. And it took a while for me to understand that there were so many flavors. And today, I listened to a teaching from Enoch Adebo. It was what I was listening to. I'm talking to taste buds. I'm editing a one minute out of my interview with um, Eunice so that people can see the interview. Putting it online. I'm listening to Adebo's message. And somebody is calling me. That's where my anger started this morning. You guys don't even know what I'm going through. So I'm going to play the message for you. I do hope I have it. Okay. Uh, I tried to record some of it. So I was going to share it with you. And I was going to pray for this man. So that God takes him and shows him other flavors of ice cream. And also shows him that this particular flavor that he's eating, or like Nigerian man who say licking, is, is not going to help him or his ministry. So I'm going to play the video for you. And we're going to listen to him speak for a few moments. Oh my goodness, don't I have it? Okay, I have it right here. Wow, lucky you guys. I thought the guy who called me made me lose it. Second Kings 5, 20 to 27. Gehazi lied to get money. He got an incurable disease. Not only for himself, but for all these generations. Oh yeah, stop, 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 sorry. He and lied and he got an incurable disease. Not just for himself but for all his generations now according to this that um sorry i'm going to log instagram on and off real quick the time is up let me quickly log them off and log them back on so according to what he's saying do you remember one certain geo who said if you don't pay your tithe you'll make heaven which is a lie from the pits of hell does he mean that that geo does he mean that that Geo is going to have an incurable disease? According to his own doctrine, let's continue watching. Chapter 5, verse 1 to Sorry, 11. sorry. Acts 5. Okay, thank you. Acts 5, Acts 5 to 1 to 11. And Ananias and Sapphira said they were bringing a gift to God. And lied about how much they sold their life. Both of them died the same day. 
Don't ever lie again. Don't lie to God. Don't lie to God. Be listening, oh. Don't treat God as if he doesn't know. Simple arithmetic. Mm. Don't treat God like does not 10% of your salary. Don't tell him you have given him 10% when what you have given him is less. Don't tell God you have tell you here. Good, 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 good. You see, you see, my problem with these preachers is they are so deluded about the truth. If they bumped their heads into the truth and it bled, they would still not know it. Now, let me teach you the Bible. Let's go to that verse he read. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. And I want to see how this man is linking this with 10%. Where he is bringing this from. Let's just read it together. Acts chapter 5 and verse 11. Uh, Sorry, and verse 1 to 11. No problem, I'll open it to you. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, I'm reading from 1. Now, a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece. Also. Hold on to the word, the word also. What does that word mean, also? They also so. What does that also mean? I need somebody to answer me. What does also mean in this context? I need somebody to answer, answer, answer. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. They also. In addition to others. God bless you, posh mama. Like others, they too sold. Other people did as well. Who were the other people that sold? Hang on. We are coming back to that. Let's finish with this scripture. Then I'll show you the other people. They also sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge. He kept back, back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Where did he put it? 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 If I don't see answers, I'm not continuing. Where did he put it? God bless you, patience. You are wonderful. Patience, Achimian, God bless you. He put at the apostles' feet. Good. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to just human beings, but to God. Then when Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that's the price. Peter said to her, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door. They will carry you out also. And at that moment, she fell down and died. Okay. Two things I brought out. Also and the apostle's feet. Also and the apostle's feet. Right? Are those the words I, I brought up? I'm not continuing until we are in understanding. Also and the apostle's feet. I'm not saying one more word until I can see that you're with me. Okay, you guys all agree, right? Good. So where did he also come from? And where did the apostles' feet come from? So let's go to the previous chapter, Acts chapter 4, and go to the end of it. By reading 32, the last verse in chapter 4 is 37. 
So I'm reading from 32, so you can understand what happened all the way to the end of Acts chapter 4 and begun in Acts chapter 5. So let's read from 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's great grace was upon them all. That there was no needy person among them, for from time to time, those who owned, owned land or houses would sell them, brought the money to, from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet. This is where the apostles' feet came from. Put the money at the apostles' feet, and it was then distributed to anyone who had need. Question one. Uh, uh, this question is for Enoch Adeboe. Is this tight? The money is brought. They sell their stuff. They bring the money and lay it at the feet of the apostles. And it is distributed to the poor. Is that tight? That you are now joining it with 10%? I'll take it a little further. If we go to 36 now, those who had land, we've already have, had an explanation from 32 down to 35. Now 36 says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whose apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. So they ended Acts chapter 4 with verse 36 and 37 speaking of another person whose name was Joseph who sold what he had and brought to the apostles feet for the distribution to the needy and then they started Acts chapter 5 now a man named Ananias together with his wife Sapphira who also sold a piece of property also like who like Joseph also, like everybody else, kept, however, unlike Joseph, he kept a part of the money for himself and only brought the rest to the apostles' feet. They brought all, not 10%, and they shared all. That is Christian giving. They did not, you see, Adeboe, unless every member of Redeemed Church flies a private jet, you can never use this as illustration. Never. Only you are flying private jet with your family and one or two other of your church members, then the majority are living in poverty. And then you tell them that, they should bring money and come and lay at your feet. What the apostles are doing with money, is that what you are doing with it? Please, 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 please. Let's continue watching the video. And remember what they told him. It was not by force. If I read it to you, this is what Peter said to Ananias. How is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and you have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? Nobody asked you for it. You came and volunteered that this is all the money, whereas you had kept some. I don't know if I'm making sense to you guys. So we've got to be very careful. I want to round this off because I have a meeting with someone from the Financial Times. Again. house uncompleted, you 
hurry to complete your own, he bet you are slow to complete his own. He says, even if you make the money, it will be put into a pocket with holes. <laughs> told the story before of a highway robber in Lagos in the 1950s. His name was Anikura. Some of you are too young to know. As the elders, he was such a notorious robber that they waxed a record about him. And they said concerning Anikura that Anikura will not ask you not to trade. He will not ask you not to make gains. But he will see to it that you don't take the gain home. That was Anikura. What God was saying in Haggai chapter 1 from verse 3 to 11 is that a spiritual anikura So is is now arm robber that he wants to use to explain Christianity now I want to. That Anikura part is just such a good joke that I'm not going to waste my time on it. But I want to talk about the beginning part where he spoke. Uncompleted. Uh -huh, this part. Uh -huh. House uncompleted. Don't leave God's house uncompleted. Show you here. Haggai chapter 1 verse 3 to 11. Don't leave God's house uncompleted. Acts chapter 4. I'm not going to read Old Testament with you. I'll be reading Haggai about God's house. Acts chapter 4 under our covenant. Sorry, Acts chapter 7 verse 44. Let's read that together. Adebo is building houses for God. Obviously, this man needs to come and learn the Bible in the free nation. I don't know how to even say it. This is what I want to go and listen to inside church. This is what me I'm going to go and listen to inside church. When I should be teaching them. Acts chapter 7 verse 44. Our ancestors carried the tabernacle with them through the wilderness. It was constructed according to the plan God had shown to Moses. Years later, when Joshua led our ancestors in battle against the nations that God drove out of this land, the tabernacle was taken with them into the new territory, and it stayed there until the time of King David. David found favor with God and asked for the privilege of building a permanent house for the God of Jacob, but it was Solomon who actually built it. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands, as the prophet says. Adeboe, God does not live in a house made by human hands. Stop telling your people to build houses for God. Acts chapter 17 and verse 20. Two. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I noticed you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars had this inscription on it to an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is the Lord of the heaven and the earth, he doesn't live in man-made houses. And human hands can serve his needs. Adeboe, reacquaint yourself with the Bible. Building a house for God has absolutely nothing to do with Christianity. 
and everything to do with backsliding into the old law where a veil covers our heads. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50, when Jesus died on the cross, as he gave up his spirit, the spirit was released and the veil in the temple was torn. Go and watch my teaching on the veil. As that veil was torn, people like this man are stitching that veil back together. Because the truth of Christianity is not favoring them. They want to build houses for God. God doesn't live in your houses, sir. Use the money of Christianity to stop using the money of Christianity to build man-made temples. We got Christianity all wrong. And because we refused to go out and see what the Bible really is, we're stuck with three flavors of ice cream. God bless you all. Hope you enjoyed today's teaching.